Hi everybody, K Mac here, and I like to live stream inking inking practices that I do. Um, and I'm using Procreate to do it. I'm using a, a pay by donation brush by a gay, by a guy named um, Rob Marzulis, and he has a great Instagram channel. I've linked to his brushes below, so if you're interested in the brushes that I'm using, you can get them from him. Throw a few bucks his way, because uh, it takes a while to develop this kind of stuff. I generally use two pens from him. Um, I use the technical inking pen, and I've modified it a little bit. Uh, I'll show you. So uh, he has TechPen 1, I have TechPen 1 1, and the big difference is, is that I've added just a little bit more streamlining. Uh, today, I have already gotten a head start, <laughs> mainly because my computer had to do an update and I couldn't start the live stream, like my iPad wasn't showing up in Open Broadcast Studio, so I had to, uh, I had to wait. And so did you, gentle listener. <laughs> um, thank you for tuning in, if, you, if anyone ever does tune in. Nobody actually watches these live streams, but me, later. Uh, sometimes my friend Amelia listens to them. But uh, someday, maybe someone will, and that could be you. <laughs> um, I, today, so it's like, there's sort of like a roundabout reason why I'm inking this particular panel. Uh, and so it's like this cute scene about this little boy in a wheelchair, and he's giving a, a flower to this other little girl, and so she can give it to her mom. And it's like a really sweet comic in in general like the whole thing I'm, I'm not going to show you the whole thing but it's about this little boy and he he spends his money and buys a bunch of flowers and then he like gives flowers out to people he meets on the street um and he gives them all away so he doesn't have one to give his grandma and he's like oh grandma it'll just be the the thought that counts but it turns out the guy uh pushing his wheelchair around like found some extra flowers and so grandma has like even more flowers than she would have had uh, and it's it's very sweet uh, and so just keep that in mind that this was like a very sweet comic so Apple Mary is drawn by a lady called Martha Orr and her, it was in the depression so it was like a depression era strip and it got really popular because it had like you know sort of in, in some ways, down-to-earth storylines. Like, if you think about, uh, this was out at around the, s like, a little bit earlier than Prince Valiant, uh, so probably in, like, Flash Gordon days. So this was like, oh, this is like a real thing with real people. And what's more surprising is that it was a really successful comic by a lady. And what might be less surprising is that she was the niece of, um, oh, I can't remember his first name, but a guy who had like a, a successful syndicated comic strip. So it's like she had, an, she had an in to the industry, which is like how a lot of like, if you like hear about like a famous woman in art history before like 1960, uh, sometimes like that's why. So if you think about um, Artemisia Gentileschi, who I talked about in an earlier live screen stream, she was a Renaissance painter and her dad, had a painting studio and like none of her brothers were interested in painting so she like picked up the family tradition uh and if you caught my last live stream i was uh working i was interested in interiors like interior spaces and that's because i've been doing a lot of um perspective drawing lately and i i was just sort of like oh how are they rendering perspectives and the the strip that i was using to practice with was apartment 3g and in my mind, Apartment 3G and the comic, I promise this is coming back to Apple Mary uh, and why I'm, I'm inking this panel. But so Apartment 3G and Mary Worth are uh, almost synonymous in my mind. Like they, they almost, they occupy the same brain cell. And it's because I think maybe in the newspaper I read as a kid, they were side by side. Uh, they had similar art styles. They had like, they were just both like grown up comics that I didn't bother to read. And the reason that I'm bringing up Mary Worth is that Apple Mary, uh, in a contested fashion, is the predecessor of Mary Worth. So, like, Apple Mary, the character, who's this kid's grandma, I think, uh, is the character Mary Worth. So, Martha Orr, 
did, you know, Apple marry for a long time. And then she had to step down because she had to, for family reasons, take care of a family, which is also the story of a lot of women in the arts where it's like, well, you can do one or the other sometimes. And, and many, many women have done both, but you know, 1930s. Um, and so I was like looking for a Mary Worth strip to practice interiors from. And then I, I, you know, was like looking up Mary Worth on Wikipedia and I learned about Apple Mary. And so I started looking for Apple Mary strips to draw interiors from. And I found this strip that does have some very good interiors, but also it has this nice exterior. Uh, and the thing that I'm most interested in are, are these trees because the whole reason I was practicing interiors is because I was frustrated with exteriors. Uh, I really want to be able to draw trees in a comic style. And, and I like these two trees that are, that are in the strip. So long story short, that's why this strip. Uh, but I'm glad I found it. Uh, Martha Orr has a nice style and she has a lot of these like really fine lines, especially like in her backgrounds. Oh, what the heck? Well, no, I can't show you the whole strip because I, anyway, I you, you can look it up. You can look it up yourself. She does a lot of like these really fine lines for the background details. Like if you look at this sort of stone wall and the, um, and the tree behind it, these are all like in mono weight lines. And you can see like in the in the people in the actual figures the the part that the eye is drawn to and will look at the most there's a lot more line variation and i'll turn off what i was doing but it's like you can see there's like deliberate thicks and thins and like the the girl's hair the boy's hat the gentleman's jacket and coat like are really dark spots so this reminds me a lot honestly of nell brinkley and martha orr so nell brinkley died in uh, the 1930, like maybe 1935. So Martha Orr would have been, uh, like since this, she would have known of Nell Brinkley and probably been inspired by her. So I'm wondering if like this, this fine line look came from the inspiration for Nell Brinkley. Uh, the answer has been lost to time. And so unless someone proves me otherwise, I'm just gonna say, yeah, that's, uh, that's what happened. These fine lines are due to the ele <laughs> the influence of comic master Nell Brinkley, Martha Orr, carrying on the tradition. <laughs> uh, so the reason that I say that it's contested is that like, if you go to the Wikipedia page for Mary Worth, one, Apple Mary, the page for Apple Mary redirects to Mary Worth. So it's like Wikipedia is like, listen, these are obviously the same thing. And so the only one that's denying that they're connected is King Syndication, which is the, the company that syndicated Mary Worth. They're like, yeah, no, contrary to popular belief, these, um, it's just a coincidence. So it's like, well, is it? Because there's a lot of characters in um, Apple Mary that are have the exact same name and look in Mary Worth. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, and like, even like the, the, the guys who did the art for Mary Worth, which, oh yeah, let's just hire a couple men to do it. Uh, it's fine. Um, it obviously went on to be very popular, so it's like, it's not like that was a bad decision. Um, but the guys who took it over were like, oh yeah, it's a continu It's totally a continuation of Apple Mary. And the thing that's like kind of hilarious, like not surprising, but also like, oh, this is sad, but also not surprising about um, like the development of Mary Worth is like, each iteration of Mary Worth, uh, they're like, sexier, sexier Grandma Mary Worth. <laughs> so like the first guys who took it over from Apple Mary were like, yeah, we got to get rid of that dowdy Apple seller and her, her Apple cart is never coming back, even if the economy gets terrible. Um, this rose is not great, but we're going to live with it. Uh, and then after that, they're, they're like, yeah, we got to like, we got to slim her down. We got to like, make it look less old um even though like the the charm and joy of this strip is in this particular strip is that you know grandma like gets flowers uh and so then when it like so that like happens one time and the new artists take it over and they're like we gotta slimmer down again and less wrinkles uh this often happens or i don't know if it often happens i can think of another time it has happened uh so if you think of like aunt may in spider-man in the Tobey Maguire version, she like starts out as an old lady 
and then like in each iteration she just gets progressively younger and younger until it's like hot marissa tomei uh who's 50 instead of like being like an, an actual elderly woman it's like oh if i don't want to sleep with her how can i put her in a comic <laughs> i'm being unfair i am i i don't know i just think it's funny it's like Tale as old as time, old ladies must look younger. I'm pretty sure that's how the song goes. Uh, yeah, so like I said, I never read a lot of Mary Worth. It wasn't something that interested me. But there is another... There was one time in my life where I was reading Mary Worth, and, and it happened to be, I think, like, probably at the, like, Best, best time, time or, or like, like most like I, I don't know. So, so <laughs> it happened. It happened at a time when like people were reading, reading Mary Worth, and, and, and uh, uh, so this was back, back in another another life life that, that uh, one of the ways that I consume newspapers, I have consumed newspaper comics in my life, my life primarily, primarily through, through the something off thing on and uh, uh, because they had, they had threads, threads where people posted. Every day they posted the comics of the day, and they post ones that like, even if they were syndicated, if they weren't like being drawn new. And uh, so one of the, the time that I was doing that was 2006, and and now again I've like rediscovered like an old friend. But so it's it's 2006, and and Mary Worth is having this um, storyline where. Mary Worth is getting stalked by a guy. Um, his name is Aldo, and his last name is Stalker backwards. <laughs> um, and I'm not even going to try and say it, but so we're just going to call him Aldo. And and the storyline was just like kind of bizarre. Like it was just like like watching Mary Worth get stalked, and, and it's also it's like it it doesn't matter how young you make Mary Worth. It's it. I mean, she's never going to be like. Like, I don't know, um, Modesty Blaze or Spider Woman or, or who, who, whoever else is like a sexy comic lady. Um, and so it's just sort of like bizarre one that he's stalking her. Uh, like, just like the, like the pace of the storyline. I think it was just like comedic territory. And the people on the Something Awful forum went to town. Like, they thought it was just hilarious and would like... They made a lot of like art, like like just mocking it. Like uh, if you've watched The Simpsons, there's like kind of this famous scene where uh, Homer like just walks backwards into a bush, and like like it's memed all the time. Like I just saw it on uh, Reddit where like someone like made a cake of that, um, and so one of the things they did on something awful was that they made Aldo the person like walking backwards into the bush. Um, and like people had it as their avatars and like every day the strip came out people were just like commenting like how ridiculous it was uh, and it was really funny and it, so it was funny to like go and read the Wikipedia article and be like oh yeah remember that ridiculous Mary Worth storyline uh, and so like at the end of the storyline I guess like Mary Worth has a like don't stalk people intervention which, which seems odd to say but um, and he's like, oh yeah, maybe I shouldn't stalk people. Maybe I'll just go back to drinking. And he like drives himself off a cliff. And I, I feel like the, the something awful for him exploded. Cause they're like, oh my gosh, how can this be the end of this story that he just like drives himself off the cliff and dies? Um, I, it, it was like, oh, it, it was like hearing a joke you hadn't quite remembered the punchline to. Um, and I can't believe it all came from Apple Mary. Uh, just funny how things can change. Uh, one of the one of the other comics that that has kind of like had that moment in the media is is Nancy Nancy the comic, um, and Nancy the comic was was a little bit like Apple Mary in that uh, Nancy started out as this comic called Fritzy Ritzy. And, and it was about this just sort of like, and it actually, I think it came out about the same time as Apple Mary, where it's like a story that's about 
Um, and it goes the opposite direction. Instead of like salt of the earth, it's like escapist fantasy. It's like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to be like a like a spoiled rich girl that doesn't understand, you know, life? Uh, which I'm like, that's it's almost like the Barbie fantasy in a way. Uh, and anyway, so Nancy was uh, Fritzy Ritzy's niece. And, and when someone else took over the strip, they were like, oh, you know what's the real gold here? This weird-headed kid. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Charlie Brown's a weird-headed kid, and he worked out fine, so... Um, yeah. For some reason, I thought those stories were going to, like, take a lot, a lot more time than they did. <laughs> and they definitely did not. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> I yeah I, I can't tell if I I want to go back and read Mary Worth or not. Uh, I don't know. Like I'm glad that she exists as like a character. I wonder if it's like Prince Valiant. Like when you when I went back to read Prince Valiant, I'm like, oh wow, these storylines are actually really good. Uh, I wonder if the Mary Worth storylines are any good. The problem is is that sometimes it's like kind of hard to access, and especially for a lot of these comics. Uh, I think King Syndicate, you have to like pay for a premium account, which, you know, is not the end of the world, but it's like, I don't really want to pay to read like 50 years of Mary Worth comics. Although for the Aldo story, it might be worth it. Um, it's been interesting, like learning to draw in perspective, like, like of all the, like, I don't know, it's like every tutorial, it's like, great. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm trying to like decide if I have to like talk about what perspective drawing is. But every tutorial is, is sort of like, great, establish a vanishing point, um, draw some lines, bada bing, bada boom, you got a room. And, and then like I try it and my rooms just look terrible. Like, just awful. And, and, and so it's like, oh... It, like, comics can help in, like, determining line. Like, here, if I was going to do it in the style of Apple Mary, I could draw a perspective room uh, with figures in the foreground that have strong variation and contrast in their line weight and then, like, dark filled spaces. Like, if I was, if I was going to use this, but... The thing that you can't really get from studying comics, or maybe you can't, like there's a lot you can get from studying how to draw rooms from comics, which is like uh, how much of the room is usually shown, like in what perspective, like what have other people done? And, and Apartment 3G especially is really good for that. But the thing that's hard is is um, just proportion. Like, like it's easy to draw things badly in perspective like there's so there's one point perspective and two point perspective and and if you look like just google image search one point perspective on and and it specifically search for one point perspective bedroom and what you what you'll get is like like two or three like really well rendered bedrooms and then just like a hundred kind of crummy student bedrooms and and, and it, it's taken me a little bit to figure out what the difference is and, and it it really does come down to a proportion because furniture is is designed to fit the human body and well sort of oh, bookmark we'll come back to that and so when the proportions are off it just doesn't look right to the eye uh, it looks wrong much like human beings look wrong when, when we have the same proportion, but probably not to the same degree. We're not, we don't have like a part of our brain that's wired to recognize ch chairs the way we do faces. Um, or maybe we do. I don't want to, you know, I don't, if, if we do, it's not as big. <laughs> uh, so it's like one of the things that I've been working on uh, in perspective drawing is, is, is one, figuring out like, one of the nice things about perspective drawing is is that uh, you can create your own guidelines a lot. You can like divide up space by using um, like geometry and lines, so it becomes like you can create methods of spacing that's really fun and kind of cool. Uh, but you just have to get like depth right. You have to get like like how tall is a sink really? Where does a couch really hit? on the wall like how 
like where are windows like like what do houses look like and I think a lot of us know that intuitively but when you go to draw it you have to like do something else to um like you have to you have to get that right for people to to buy it um to and in some ways it's sort of like oh there's so many ways to to do rooms like there's a lot of computer programs now that will do it for you so it's like what's even the value of learning to draw especially rooms in perspective and and for me I think uh I'd like to be able to go to like a nice room someday when the pandemic is over and just like sit in it and draw it. I'd like to be able to like draw a room that I see without having to take a picture of it or without having to like fire up my computer. Like theoretically, if I just had a ruler and a pencil and a piece of paper, I could draw the room in perspective. And also, I want to draw rooms from imagination. And, and that becomes a lot easier when you don't have to lean so heavily on reference. Not that you, you would never lean on a reference, but just that if, if, you, if you understand why and what, it's a lot easier. I think. I hope. I drew a... a I was really proud of myself and it's just sort of like oh great like good job uh you drew a thing but i i was because i i found a picture of like a really simple sink and mirror and and i was able to recreate it like i was able to just looking at the photo reference draw it like without tracing and so much of what i do is tracing and there's nothing wrong with tracing but I, I just like I, I feel like more of a drawer if I can draw it myself uh, without having to trace or without needing to trace and I feel like that's an important step to like being able to draw rooms from imagination and it, it, it's something I've been like exploring a lot in in my drawing time that isn't this just because it's somehow it's easier for me like it makes more sense than the human figure, which I really struggle with. Uh, like, I really struggle with. Somehow. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know if I'm practicing drawing rooms in perspective because I'm just, like, scared of, of drawing people, but it is what it is. It is what it is. This is a nice tree. And it's funny, like, as I'm drawing it, I'm like, oh, I wonder if the tree would really look like this, have, like, these three branches... Maybe it would. I don't know. It looks nice. I like the way that she's done the leaves. Like, that's the hardest part for me in trees right now. Is, like, figuring out the canopy. I can sort of get the... The branches. But, like, this is a... It's nice to see how she's rendered... The leaves. Trees are so hard for me, personally. Lines I can do all day. Organic shapes, tough. It's like she's got this little cutout here. Branch inside. I don't quite understand all this visual information, but that's okay. I don't know. I just keep looking at trees and, and hoping someday I'll figure it out. It does help to like I don't know it helps when like other people have have paved the way like in drawing especially like if I can look at what Martha Orr has done like how she renders trees then then that's like one less step I have to take to figure out how to do it myself um, I don't have to like spend the time to abstract it the same way and it's been sort of that way with with drawing perspective rooms like I've, I've like gotten a bunch of books about it and uh because there's like a lot of sort of like sources that I didn't expect in terms of of like drawing rooms where it's like oh architectural drawings yes of course but then also like engineering and technical drawing has has been like a help in in just rendering geometric patterns 
uh, and, and and drawing in perspective something which I think is is pretty it's like oh this is nice that this is like so laid out for me I didn't even like think of, of these styles of drawings as resources but here they are um, what's interesting about these is like that the under canopy is is so much more detailed and like shaggy and the the upper canopy is is more cloud like I just think that's like a that's an interesting detail what does it mean I don't know but <laughs> uh Yeah, it's it's funny too, like like so many drawing books on perspective are just the same and like not in a bad way, but just like there's only so much you can say about like one point perspective, but I feel like they all just kinda miss like that that part where of proportion and that's where the like architectural building and, and drawing books have been so helpful. Uh, so it's like I bookmarked that like furniture is designed for most people like I found this great book about um, just where they were like well what do we mean exactly by most people and how much space do people really need and um, like how big should things be uh, and so it just like has all these like listings of like like how far apart things should be and, and where counters should come to and how big chairs should be so like that's super cool uh, and that's that's like really interesting and I also found this gray book that I'll probably talk about again. Uh, and it's called Getting Your House Right. And it's essentially just written by like a super cranky dude that hates McMansions. And it's like, and like the entire book is like, has all these like do's and don'ts. And every don't is like, please, dear God, stop building McMansions. Like just stop. They look awful. Make things look nice. And, uh, it took me a while to realize that the foreword of the book was written by the Prince of Wales. So, like, Prince Charles. Because uh, I think the book is, like, intended to be like, we need to have our homes looking like proper English homes again. And it's all about, like, when you have outside windows, do it like this, not like this. Oh, God, the McMansions. Like, and I think, like, the roofs of McMansions he hates the most. And I think you're you're going to be hard pressed to find anybody nowadays besides the people that live in them who like McMansions. Okay, so if you're not American and you don't know what a McMansion is, it's uh there's been a time and maybe it's still going on. I don't know. I don't live in a McMansion. I live in a city. <laughs> um but it's like where there are these suburban homes and they're just gigantic. And they're also like maybe not super well built. Uh, and and they just like go crazy on on the architectural details like like uh, they'll have different styles of, of windows all together and the proportion will be off and they'll have a lot of decorative roof features and and like like roofs that don't make any sense and, and so it's just sort of like breaking the brains of like anybody who uh, like does proper house building but I'm sure like as time goes on like like there will be like some sort of renaissance or like they'll find like one guy who, who like actually knew like either through accident or design what he was doing and like made beautiful McMansions or something. Uh, I think the problem with people have with McMansions, this is just me speculating because I don't actually like spend a lot of time thinking about McMansions. Um, oh, and the reason they're called McMansions is like a reference to McDonald's. So it's like you just kind of order this like pre-made uh, thing that's masquerading as uh, something that's actually good. Actually, I don't know if that's a good interpretation. I should have looked at McMansions before I started this. Uh, but one of the most helpful things about that particular book is that it, it goes over like all the like components of a house. Like... What kind of windowsills are there? What kind of masonry is there? What kind, like, like what is this? Uh, like, what's actually happening? Um, and so that was something that I really liked about it. And the thing, like, so they have a whole. The book has a whole section on crown molding. And crown molding is a kind of molding. Uh, it, it's like pieces of wood that are either at your baseboard or they're like between the ceiling the, t the ceiling and the wall 
and I have some in my house, but just like breaking down the pieces of crown molding, uh, it helped me understand like why the pieces are there and what they and, and what they uh, what their purpose is, and and how you can you how you can do it wrong. Um, like each piece of the molding is there for a specific reason, and there are some like you, there's some ways you can stack it and some ways you can't. And so like that kind of stuff is gold because now when one when I look at crown molding, I know what I'm looking at. Like I have a greater appreciation of what the molding actually is. And if I need to recreate it, I'm like, oh, okay, this is this makes sense to have this number of lines. Um, yeah, so I recommend that book, Getting Your House Right, just for its breakdowns of like, it has breakdowns of like door jams and and like uh, how different windows um, should look and like how you should like, uh, yeah, how you should render things. Um, it has a huge section on on like columns like Roman columns uh, Tuscan columns what's the difference how do you draw them I'm hoping to, to find even more books and, and another book I found was just a just a book, just a book on, on, engineering. on engineering drawing and it, and it has, has it has like a, a bonus chapter, chapter on perspective, perspective drawing it's like it's like the, the best, best, best most cohesive, cohesive explanation of, 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 of how to how build, build how to build how perspective, perspective grids, grids. And, and, it, and it's just and sort it's of just like, like every, every drawing book about perspective drawing is like missing one piece of it so I just feel like I've been trying to like put it all together in one like way that I can understand uh, I'm still working on two-point perspective but I'm just like oh, I feel like I'm getting close on one-point perspective I, I just want to keep keep going at it keep chugging along and in some ways like drawing like like that is it's or like learning about drawing like everything I learn about drawing I'm like oh god it's like relearning the world I'll never have time to get good at it uh, so that's a little like uh, I'll never it's never done and then it's also exciting because there's always something to do it's not really exciting <laughs> I just want to be done I want to be like an amazing drawer people throw millions of dollars at me <laughs> No, honestly, I'd just be satisfied with being able to recreate what's in my head on a page. Like, just to be able to, sh like, one that turned out the way I was thinking, and then, oh, look, I drew it. We'll see. We'll see. It's just nice to draw. I was talking with my coworker today about, um, just like, oh, is drawing fun? It's like I'm, I'm also in a writing group and I'm like, writing is not fun. I don't enjoy writing. And I keep being in a writing group and I'm like, oh, I should stop this. This isn't fun. Every time I have to submit something, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> like you have to like drag it out of me. Um. But drawing it is fun. I draw every day and I like it. I, I mean, I like to draw. Just the act of drawing is fun for me. Actually, I'm just going to redo that RL. <laughs> okay, let's figure that out. Yeah, uh, basically, I like to draw. You probably need to do too. Um, it is one thing, though, that's interesting about perspective drawing is that it relies so much on straight lines. Uh, so I did this drawing the other... Like I said, I did this drawing that I liked. I'm like, oh, I like this drawing that I've made. I'm proud of it. Uh, but like the first iteration of it was just kind of drawn using the straight line feature in Procreate. So like you can see it now, like it, like where it like snaps to be a straight line like that. And I did that like all through the beginning part of the drawing. And then I, I you know, I started, I had everything blocked into place. And then I realized I'm like, oh, there's no, there's no point to that. And, and hear me out. Um, because it's like, if, if you just want to do something with like precision straight lines, Procreate isn't the program you want for that. Like you could, you can make that in any number of programs. You don't need Procreate for that. So I like, I like went back and I like 
kind of went over all the lines just like so they had like an obviously hand rendered feel to them and and I think that was actually kind of nice like like this line that I'm drawing now I'm like drawing it slowly like that's kind of the pace I was going because they some of the lines were pretty long and I, I think that actually did that that was actually kind of helpful because it um, was like oh yeah if I'm tracing lines and, and the lines are hard like I could just um, there's also an easier way to do this filling in that I'm doing but I like this is the fun part let me have this let me have this fun thing um, I'm speaking to myself more than anyone uh, but yeah so it's like like if, if you're gonna do it in procreate like do it in procreate like you don't need you don't need to make a straight line thing in procreate you can do that somewhere else except uh, a lot of comic backgrounds the backgrounds are done in really fine lines so um, yeah not always straight lines so uh, yeah I don't know I take I take it back you can use fine lines but if you're just doing straight lines like you're better off I would have been better off in something like Illustrator also I got clip um, clip studio paint but just like the trial version and I I've, I've been diving into it a little bit but it's just a, like I don't even know what it's capable of I need to like watch more tutorials because like the thing that that procreate is or that is frustrating about procreate is is that I've been an illustrator user for a long time um, and and the thing that illustrator has that that procreate doesn't is rulers uh, you can make guides you can snap to grids and guides uh, you can move objects with mathematical precision you can have vector objects which are infinitely scalable and and procreate is so good for like this ink the, like the inking part but just in terms of like rendering a composition and especially rendering one with lines like illustrator has it beat like 10,000 percent so like here if like say I wanted to divide something into five uh, that's very hard like I'd have to eyeball it like I, there's no ruler function that can help me uh, but in Illustrator all I have to do is make five lines uh, a, you know a, a line group and then it's done bing bang boom um, Illustrator is not so great at the brushwork and Illustrator only or mostly creates vector objects you can do raster things but it's sort of like an after the fact effect so it's it's like neither program is perfectly suited and and clip studio paint kind of sells itself that way but I have to like do more work like I, I, I ha so far haven't been able to like fully get um, or fully explore the possibilities all right so I'm gonna I'm probably gonna finish up a little bit early today because I started while I was like restarting um, I think that looks pretty good this tree is a little funky on the side but that's fine yeah it was nice to check in with with Martha Orr um, she had a nice piece I like the the way it looks so yeah if if you ever come to listen to this thanks so much for joining me um, like comment and subscribe you know the drill um, I don't know what I'm gonna do next but it's gonna be amazing uh, thank you so much for listening and catch you next time.